All right. Are you ready to nerd out with me? Because I have some news for you. You've been hearing a lot about GLPs, glucagon-like peptides, but there's much, much more nerdiness to be known about these incredible molecules for weight loss. So Dr. Mullen, the nerd, yes, that is my drawing. It's not a lemon, it's a nerd. Uh, we're gonna talk through what are the differences between the different types of molecules that are these incredible peptides that have amazing effects on people's metabolism and blood sugar and insulin and weight loss, um, primarily through the lens of losing weight. So let's get started. We know that GLP-1s, glucagon-like peptide 1, has been sort of the mainstay. There are several on the market, but the one that's most commonly used is semaglutide. With semaglutide, we see um, an incredible amount of weight loss, uh, 10 to 15 percent of total body weight. With this medication, we see more insulin production, better burning of fat, decreasing the stomach emptying, which helps with satiety and feeling full, decreasing that food noise. What an incredible effect that has on patients and their ability to kind of cut through that noise and pay less attention to craving those, those foods that are designed to trigger that. Decreasing inflammation, and we're seeing that in all different kinds of ways, brain inflammation, body inflammation, helping with autoimmunity, pretty incredible. And obviously the piece de resistance promoting weight loss. That's kind of the end game. Now, there's actually other molecules that are GLP-1s that like semaglutide, but actually have different mechanisms of action. So they all have this, these different effects, but some of them have different molecules, different peptide actions that are a part of it. So when we think about terzepatide, we think about like a GLP-2 almost, because there's two mechanisms of action. There's the GLP-1 mechanism of action, and then there's the second mechanism of action that occurs with terzepatide through something called GIP, which is glucagon-dependent dependent insulotropic peptide, polypeptide actually, um, quite a mouthful. But it basically means that you get all of these effects plus you get greater weight loss, sometimes around 15 to 20, maybe 25% of body weight, more insulin sensitivity and greater, like I said, greater weight loss. So a little bit of a different molecule than our semaglutide. Now, here's the really nerdy thing. There's actually this thing called GLP-3, reditrutide. Not commercially available, available, but not commercially available yet on the market, but it has all of these effects of GLP-1, and GLP-2, and a third impact, which is uh, glucagon receptor agonism, which leads to increased weight loss, 25% or more, is being, they're being studied right now, and actually better lipids. Now, by lipids, I mean things like cholesterol, triglycerides, insulin sensitivity, et cetera. Um, all of these can impact lipids. All of these can impact cardiovascular disease. All of these can have impacts on fatty liver disease. I've seen that reversed with these medications, incredible effects. Um, but as you can see, there's sort of a stacking effect that occurs as we begin to develop out these peptides and their um, uses. So now you are as nerdy as I am when it comes to the GLP market and the GLP medications. So um, more to come as this particular area of knowledge increases over time.